Welcome ladies and gentlemen, Gorhamian here with Misfit Studios as always, and today I'm going to be showing you how to take an image and give it a lot more depth using HitFilm Express. Alright, so to create a 3D image or, or an image that has a lot more depth than just a 2D image, what we're going to actually do is First, we need to bring in our image. We're going to go ahead and drop that in there. Um, <clears throat> now, the steps to this um, aren't complicated. They're very simple. They are just a little time-consuming and kind of tedious. Um, so let's go ahead and start uh, make a composite shot. And we only want this composite shot to be, eh, we're going to make it 10 seconds long. We don't really need it to be much longer than that. Um, what we're going to do is we're actually going to drag our image in. Um, this is of the Grand Canyon. And, of course, if you can't afford to take a trip to the Grand Canyon and, you know, buy a drone and get a, you know, a few aerial shots, you're going to have to do this with HitFilm. It's just a, a little bit easier way of going about things, a little cheaper, too. What we're going to do is we're going to cut this image up into four different, four separate images, okay? And then we're going to apply those and put those into 3D space separated from one another. Um, to do that, we're actually going to be using masks. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to get Control d and we're going to duplicate that three times so we've got four of those image, four of those images, okay? Now, the rocks that you see here on the right side of this image are going to be the closest to the camera, so that's going to be the very first layer. The second layer is going to be this rock formation here to the left. You can kind of see that follow at the mouse. And then the third is going to be this ridge line here, okay? And then the background is going to be our last, our last layer. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to go ahead and turn off the... Um, bottom three layers because we don't we're not seeing those anyways um, we're actually gonna apply a mask to this rock formation over here on the right side so we're gonna go over to the uh, free mask tool the free form mask tool and make sure that we have the layer that we want we're gonna right click you can drag around and then scroll your mouse wheel in um, this is the closest to the camera, so this is going to be the most time consuming and it has to be the most accurate mask um, if you <clears throat> Um, like Inkscape or um, Adobe Photoshop or any of those kinds of photo editing and you want to crop your um, images or mask your images in, in those programs and then import those as individual pictures, you can do that as well. But for this, we're just going to be using HitFilm and its onboard mask tool. So let's go ahead and mask all the way around this rock formation. Okay, so now that we've got our mask applied to the uh, the left face of this rock, we can actually bring our mask out past the uh, the line of the, the the border of the window, the view. Let's go ahead and click to the last one, and it's going to apply that mask to that layer. Okay, so now that we've got that first layer done, we can actually go back to the selection tool, and we can turn that layer off and the next layer on, because we're going to be masking this separate layer to cut this section out here. Um, don't be, you know, too discouraged by the, you know, the time it takes. You can see it really, it doesn't take that much time. It's just kind of tedious to get all of those points put in. But as you can see, our mask is actually um, fairly decent. Just remember that the closer the object or the closer the, um, the closer the layer is to the camera, the more accurate you want that mask. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn on the second layer, and we're going to go ahead and apply a mask to the second layer. All right, just like before, since we've got that mask, we can come down and put our marks down past the edge of the viewer here. Go ahead and connect the first and last points that you put in. We'll actually complete the mask. And go back to our selection tool. Let's go ahead and turn on that first layer. Now that we've got um, our first two layers masked off, it's time to do the uh, the third layer and the final layer. The final layer is actually, it, it's not the final layer of the image, it's the final layer that's going to have a mask applied to us. Let's go ahead and turn on the third one and turn the other two off because we don't need to need to see those. 
So let's go ahead and apply our layer just like we did to the first two. We're going to go ahead and come over here to this ridge. We're going to actually start this just about there and go the exact same time. All right, so now that we've gotten the top of this ridge done, we already know that there's going to be masks on the left and the right. And so what we can do is we actually can come out back down through this instead of going outside the viewer because those that bottom of that mask is going to be covered up by the other parts of the image that we have in mask, if that makes any sense. So we're just going to go ahead and close that and connect those. So now what we're going to do is we're going to turn on the other two. And as you can see, we're slowly starting to build this image. Okay. We're taking basically chunks and covering up just basically what a mask does is um, covers up basically everything else around it. So now that we've got that, we can bring in our background. We're back to having the full image that we put in the first place. Now we need to put all of these in the th into a 3D plane, into a 3D space. Go ahead and select all of your layers, convert over to a 3D plane. It's going to ask you if you want to put a camera in because we don't have one. So you're going to go ahead and click yes. Now that we've added all of these into a 3D plane, let's go ahead and pull up our um, different views down here on the bottom right. Just click view and then two. And on the right side, it will show you um, what is happening in 3D in the 3D space that you created. So let's go ahead and scroll wheel back to zoom out. We're actually going to turn the grid off because it's a little easier to see. And up here on the top left in this window, it's showing you this is the top perspective. Okay, so here's your camera and layered on top of one another is right is all of the layers that you created here. Now, this is going to be different for every image that you do this with, obviously, because you're going to have different masks, you're going to have different shapes, different amounts of layers, depending on what you're wanting, the desired result you're wanting to get at the end. Um, I recommend labeling these, changing the name of these layers to like right rock and left rock and foreground and, you know, labeling those so you can, you know, easily identify those if you've got a whole ton of them, depending on the detail of the, the image that you want to create. But for this one, we're just going to keep them as is because they're fairly easy to find. Um, we just know that the one on the right and the one on the left are the first and second. And then the third one is this ridge line in the, here in the center. And then, of course, the very last one on the bottom is your background. So what we want to do is we actually want to change the distance between these away from the camera. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to bring up our controls over here on the left side highlight our very last layer because it's going to be the farthest away layer away and we're actually going to push this um let's go ahead and push this back let's do 400 let's go to 400 negative 400 because of course positive is going to push that um on the other side of the camera we won't be able to see it um and just to find out where your camera position ends up you can highlight your camera go into transform and it'll show you the position within this 3D space so you can get a kind of a feel for things. If you wanted to zero your camera, you can push your um, layers back from the zero axis as opposed to starting from wherever the camera started. Um, but for this, we're just gonna keep the camera in where it, wherever it ends up. Okay, so now that we've got your our background pushed all the way back, we actually wanna come into our second layer, which is this ridge line here. And we want to move that back as well. So we're going to go back into the controls, back into transform, and we're going to push that one back. Um, our first one was 400, I believe, is where the position ended up being. Our background is at yeah, negative 400. So let's go ahead and go to the very next one, which is going to be this ridge line here, which is the third layer in the... Uh, the composite shot here. So let's go to transform. And we're actually going to put this one at negative 300 and then so on and so forth, just like the with the other two. So we're going to go um, negative 200 and then negative 100 on the very first, first layer. All right. So now that we've got these layers um, kind of spread out a little bit, you can kind of see that we're actually, um, those masks are on the layers underneath them are showing the image. And so what we want to do is we actually want to move our camera to match the very last layers view. So let's go ahead and zoom out. We can go ahead and highlight our camera. And what we can do is instead of, you know, trying to do the math or anything like that, we can actually just grab this little blue arrow and drag up because we are on the top view. So this is actually pushing it forward. 
And we can push that until that very last layer lines up with our editor. So let's go ahead and go back to one view, turn the grid off. We're gonna zoom out just a little bit. And you can see we do have a little bit of a, a black, black border here on the outside. So our camera isn't quite close enough. So let's go back to our second view. We can push that forward just a smidge, just a little bit, just to get rid of that, that black line. There we go. Okay, so now that we've got our layers positioned where we want them, we actually want to change the orientation or scale, if you want, depending on the size and the shape of the different masks that you've applied. So this mountain ridge here, this this ridge line right here in the um, this third layer, um, if we move that, you can see we've covered up um, the original behind it. So let's go ahead and just move that one up and then over just a smidge, just covering um, what we had up because that was the layer that wasn't um, all that detailed with our mask. So we're going to leave that one where it's at. Let's go ahead and go to the next one, which is this rock formation over here on the left. And we can actually drag this up and, you know, make it a little closer to the camera. We're just going to pull that up, make sure that it doesn't, you know, start to show in our viewer down here. Just like that. And what we're going to do in this shot, we're actually going to slowly zoom in. And so these two rocks on the left and the right are actually going to fall away from the left and the right. So they're going to go from center and spread apart because it's giving the illusion that you're actually getting closer. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab that rock formation over on the left side. We're actually going to drag him in towards the center of the, of the shot, just like that. Make sure that your edge over here isn't past the viewer. And then we're actually going to do the exact same thing to the left one, that left rock. We're going to drag him to the left and up a little bit. Just like that. Okay, now that we've got everything set, we're going to go ahead and keyframe the travel or the position of our camera. So let's go ahead and go to the beginning of the video. We're going to keyframe the position. It's at 1464. And we're actually going to drag this all the way to the end. So we've got, you know, a nice slow 10 second um, composite shot. And we're going to drag this until it zooms in just a little bit. Just about there. Okay. So about 1063 is where we want to end up. So we can actually drag this back, back and forth just to kind of see the movement. And as you can see, the left and right layers, or the top, the first and second layers, are actually slowly moving away. And the you don't need to make a huge distance between each layer. It, it can be very subtle and still give the, give the desired effect. You can always go back into these controls Let's actually bring up our, our second window here. You can actually go into these and move these apart if you want to spread them out a little bit more. The farther they are away from each other, the more drastic the moving is going to seem or feel to your viewer as the camera pans forward because the distance between those layers is more. Um, we're going to keep them at 100 pixels a piece because you don't honestly need to be any more than that because it's all in the details with this kind of work. So nice and subtle movements. So let's go ahead and just hit play and see how that's how that's looking. It is a little long. It, it is a little slow, but that's okay. It's a ten. It's a ten second clip. You can um, you know add your voiceover any special other special effects. Um, all right. Now that we've got this exported, let's go ahead and hit play. It's actually not too bad. I like the movement. It's nice and subtle. You don't, you know, see the image underneath or anything, any of the objects, they're all hidden nicely. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for watching. Gorhamian here with Misfit Studios, as always. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and we will see you guys next time.